Okay. So, Nicole, are you ready to get started? Yes. All right. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Poshy West virtual session for Remed Recovery Care Centers. Thank you all for joining us. To confirm, we are recording this session today. Attendees, your video and audio will remain muted during the session. If you have questions, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. You may enter a question at any time, but it may not be answered until the end. At this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker today, which is Nicole Warner. And Nicole, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your role within your organization. Sure. Um, so I have been in recruiting. I am the director of recruiting for Remed, um, based out of Paoli, our corporate office. And I have been doing recruiting for about 20 years now. Um, I've done everything from third party recruiting um, to corporate recruiting. And uh, my role within Remed is a little different than um, probably other directors, just because not only am I running the recruiting department, but I'm also doing the hands-on uh, recruiting as well for the programs. So I do a little bit of everything. Um, also working on different committees within the organization. We are, because we're healthcare, um, we do, we have our CARF accredited as well. So making sure that our CARF accreditation um, policies are met and keeping the um, compliance going within Remed and within healthcare so that we can remain uh, CARF accredited. I believe it's for three years and then we go through another audit. So doing that as well. Um, so my hands are a little bit in everything within Remed. Okay, good. What do you find that employees and interns like best about your organization? I would say probably that with Remed, um, whether they're doing an internship or they're doing a co-op, we have co-op students as well, is it is different because it is extremely hands-on. So we try to make sure anytime we're talking to a student that wants to come in, our main role is a brain injury specialist. It's a direct care role. It is working directly either in our outpatient facility. Um, we do have day programs as well for our clients. Um, and our residential settings, but every position um, from a brain injury specialist to a recreational therapist, a PT, an OT, a speech therapist, um, whether it's a nursing position, everything is hands-on uh, because you are working directly with a client one-on-one -on -one sometimes, whether it's helping feed, whether it is helping them get through their morning routine, whether it's getting them to the day program so they can um, participate in group sessions or taking them in outings out in the community. It is definitely, you gain the experience um, of just about everything that you could possibly do within Remed and direct care. So that is, it, it's a very big role in an internship for people that, either students that are looking to get into PA school, or again, getting that direct care hands-on experience for um, becoming an occupational therapist, a lot that have to enroll in the programs. Um, after they get their undergrad to go into graduate school to become a PT, an OT, or a speech therapist, it allows them to gain those hours. Um, or even an athletic trainer, just getting that hands-on experience with people because the students are working side by side with our full-time staff. So they are following through our PT, OT, and speech therapists, what their instructions are, what the, the routine that they need to do, whether it's an exercise that, they, that the client needs to do or a feeding technique or whatever, they're getting that hands-on experience. Oh, nice, okay. Now, with the positions that you have there, um, I'm guessing most of them are in person, but a big question that typically will come up that I'm just going to add right now is, do you offer any type of remote type opportunities where they can like telecommute or, or do some type of project based work? We don't at this point, just because it's very hard to, um, again, you know, most of our positions are all hands on and they're working directly in the, in the residential settings or our outpatient setting, um, in our day program. Now, right now our day program is not open just because of COVID and because we out here in uh, Western PA, or I'm sorry, out here in Chester County are still in the red. Um, we don't, don't have the day programs open because it's impossible to social distance at this point. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it, it's, we haven't found a way yet. We've been talking about it to see if it's something, depending on how everything keeps moving forward, if it's something we can offer students. At this point, we haven't. Um, 
but we are still moving forward. I mean, we do have two interns coming in, two recreational therapist interns coming in in the fall. So we are still open to, you know, the hands-on in-person interns. Okay, terrific. Um, what, what do you think makes your organization unique from other companies? I think what would make our organization unique is we are completely centered around brain injury. So all of our clients that reside in our residential settings or come to our outpatient clinic um, have all suffered some form of traumatic brain injury. Mostly it comes from a car accident, but it can also be from a high risk job that they've done. Um, you know, we've had people that have worked construction that have, um, we had one client who was kicked by a horse as they were a jockey trainer. And uh, so, but everybody has suffered a traumatic brain injury and it's, it goes from every level from some that are a little bit more independent that they can live in our um, remed owned apartments that are still monitored by our brain injury specialists and our, our therapists. Um, so they're a little bit more hands off and they can survive on their own and they can live on their own most of the time. They just need a little bit of assistance to clients that are, that need 100% hands on, one on one, the experience there with getting out of bed. We have lifts in some of our, our settings um, that they're completely wheelchair bound, uh, that they need that 100% assistance. But everybody has suffered traumatic brain injury. And another thing that is unique with ReMed is we also are very involved and um, we have directors and exec team members that started an organiza organization called COBE. So it's the Council on Brain Injury and it's a nonprofit organization. So ReMed does a lot with that as well to raise money and funds for people with traumatic brain injury. Oh, very nice. Okay, what is something that most people don't know or would be surprised to learn about your organization? Um, well, again, I, one thing that does surprise people when they do learn about REMED is that we only do traumatic brain injury and that we aren't taking um, clients that have suffered something else, whether it's a stroke. I mean, sometimes the traumatic brain injury does come from a stroke, but we're not taking any other kind of um, recovery that a client may need, that if they're all traumatic brain injury. Um, and I think another thing that would surprise people is we have a lot of people that work at our corporate office or work in um, whether it would be our marketing team, whether it would be our accounting team that also work out in our programs. So they work one on one with the clients. So it, people are very, very um, ingrained in remed. And so they're doing two different roles. They might work on the weekends. We are 24 seven. So they might work on the weekends, they may work evenings, they may work an overnight shift, um, depending on what they are interested in working, but they have that opportunity to do both sides, to work on the more corporate side, and then also work in the programs to gain that experience. Okay. What is something you look for on a candidate's resume or cover letter? I'd say the most important things, is, well, number one is if they have healthcare experience or we look for majors in healthcare, whether it be psychology, again, one of the therapies, OTPT speech, recreational therapy, um, or something that they're looking to get into healthcare or the healthcare field. Another thing that I look for on a resume is spelling and grammar. That's a big thing for me is making sure that someone took the care to read through their resume, resume and make sure um, that everything was spelled correctly and that their punctuation is correct and that their grammar is correct throughout their resume. Um, and I think the third thing would have to be email address. I see a lot of students or even um, experienced people that will submit resumes that their email address is either inappropriate or they're still using their school email address that it'll bounce back to us. Um, you know, Hotmail and Gmail are free to set up an account, um, even if it's just your, you know, first initial and last name at gmail.com with a number in there, just something that's going to be professional and that you can use for just strictly your um, looking for a job or putting your resume out. Wonderful. Thank you. How about any tips on what students should do or not do even in an interview? Yes, and actually we've been doing, I've been doing some corporate interviews with uh, students for our accounting department recently and I've noticed a couple things. Um, and again, I've been in recruiting for a very long time and, and things have changed over the years. But one thing that I would tell students um, as far as interviewing is to make sure that you come prepared. I've, I've seen a lot of people come into our office without their resume. They come without any writing utensil. They're, they do not have paper. 
um, and they're just not prepared. And sometimes, yes, I will print out the resume, but there may be another hiring manager that's stepping into the interview that does not have a copy of their resume. Um, and it just shows that you took the time and you're interested um, and you know, research the job that you're there and prepared. Another thing is, again, researching. Now, when you look up pre-meds, some people still aren't too sure exactly what we do. I have no problem explaining it to them in the interview, but that they understand just a little bit and that we are involved in brain injury um, shows that they took the time to at least look at our website. And I think another thing would be to make sure you're asking questions. Uh, we always ask at the end of the interview and most anybody that you will interview with will ask, do you have any questions? And there are so many people that say, nope, I really don't have anything to ask. One thing I would suggest is you can go on Google and look anywhere on the web where you can Google what questions should I ask during an interview and just list you know, five or six questions. So even if you have one or two to ask, you're showing again that you came prepared and um, you took the time to research and prepare for the interview. Okay, great, thank you. Um, what, and you mentioned a couple of opportunities already, but are there additional opportunities available for alumni or soon to be alumni, current students, anything like that within your organization specifically and maybe some locations? Yeah, I mean, we are located in um, Chester County, out in Paoli is our corporate office. We also have locations in Philadelphia, which isn't far. Um, and then we also have locations out in Western Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh area, Jeanette, Greensburg, Irwin. We are in Maryland, out near Silver Spring. We have a couple locations out there. We're also up in New Jersey. And um, we do have a couple locations out in Louisiana, which was um, our most recent acquisition. So we're pretty widespread. Um, and I mean, our positions range from, again, the direct care role as a brain injury specialist to therapy to nursing. Nursing is a big position within ReMed because we do have medical houses where we have our more medically inclined or compromised clients. So we're always looking for LPNs, RNs, uh, CNAs as well. And um, uh, we have in our outpatient program, we also do a lot of group sessions. Uh, so psychology, psychiatry um, there as well as the PTO team speech therapist. Okay, nice. Um, if anyone does have questions, please feel free to go ahead and enter those in the chat feature below. But is there one piece of information you'd like to leave students with as we finish our session today? Um, yes, um, when you do interview, even if you do not hear back right away from a recruiter or you um, did not get the job, one thing that will always stand out, and it stands out to me because very few people do it anymore, is sending a thank you email. Um, that would be one thing I would encourage everybody to do, whether it's just a, a quick two sentence email saying, hey, thank you for taking the time to, to meet with me. I appreciated the information. Um, it just goes a long way and you always remember that person. Oh, very good. We do have one more question. Oh, good. Thank you, Emma. I'm just going to check in. Um, are there any opportunities for students with the majors of social work and clinical mental health? I noticed that you mentioned group work. Um, would those students be able to fit into that type of um, opportunity? Um, yes, so social work is, is another major, sorry, I forgot to mention that one, but we do have case managers. Um, we have clinical site managers as well. Um, our, the way our positions are kind of broken up, it is the direct care side where we have more of the hands-on and then we have the clinical aspect as well that are helping with intakes. So when we do get a new client um, that they're meeting with the families, they're talking to you, um, the clients and getting, again, they're, all of our clients are adults. So we do have to deal directly with them as well as the family, um, depending on who is designated as their guardian. So it is dealing a lot with them, asking them questions. Um, we are a drug-free and alcohol-free um, organization in, in our residencies. So we make sure that the clients are signing off um, with our social work, it is making, you know, they have a caseload of clients that they're talking to, making sure that they're getting the, the um, counseling they need, anything that they possibly would need to help recover from their brain injury. Uh, one thing that some people do not realize is people that have suffered traumatic brain injuries do become dependent either on alcohol or drugs. So it is, it is a big thing within our organization to make sure that we're providing almost daily counseling on that. Are there opportunities for both bachelor's and master level students? Yes, yes. And you also, um, 
one of the great things about REMED is we do offer tuition reimbursement. So we do have a lot of uh, students that will come in with their bachelor's degree, whether it's psychology, whether it's social work, um, or you know whatever the, the degree is in at that point in time and work at REMED. And while they're working at REMED, utilize the tuition reimbursement to go back to school and get their master's degree. Nice. And that's all the questions we have listed. Okay. Wonderful. And any la if anyone does have a last minute question, please feel free to go ahead and enter it in now. But if not, um, so thank you all for attending our session today. Thank you to our speaker, Nicole. We appreciate you taking the time to share your information about ReMed and the opportunities that you have available. If anyone does have additional questions following our session, please reach out to your university career center specifically, and they can provide you with contact information or reach out to us to provide that information for you. Um, at this time, since we don't have any additional questions, then we can wrap everything up. But thank you all. Stay well. Thank you. You're welcome.